Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. Today, we're going to go over an absolutely absurd, ridiculous, insane case out of New York. And of course, it has to do, and it all boils down to, it always goes back to New York State's bail law and whether or not you could remand somebody based on dangerousness. Now, today's story is not going to be very fun. Well, I'm going to make it really fun, but the case is going to be really horrible it's going to be really disgusting, and you're likely going to be really mad. But before we get into that anger, before we build up to that, I just want to say congratulations to Alf Benny and Christine, better known as Chris, in my YouTube moderator chat and all that. I was so happy to be able to attend your wedding. I'm so glad you guys included me in that. And honestly, after years of terrible things happening, the pandemic, the George Floyd riots, all the bad stuff that was passed into law post the George Floyd riots, it is a sigh of relief that during the course of all that, you two found each other and you were able to finally tie the knot, get married, and I got to be there for basically every step of the way. Alf, you know you're loved by this channel. Everybody go over and subscribe to Alf Benny. Go watch his compilations of the Young Turks. They're absolutely hilarious, the best on the interwebs. He makes his own music for them, for Christ's sakes. And Chris, I wish you both all the happiness in the world. And for you guys out there in my audience, the reason I was able to see this every step of the way, the reason I was able to be there for the ceremony and all that is because you allow me to have the absolute coolest job on the planet where I get to meet the coolest people. And I'm so appreciative of you for what you've given me as well. Now, before we get into the video, we have a sponsor. So I'm going to go to Schmoltz to sell you stuff because that's how I roll. And we'll talk about the whole case on the other side. Thick skin is good for more than just fighting off mean words. In fact, thick skin can actually help prevent you from showing the visible signs of aging. Because when your skin gets thin, it starts to lose elasticity, you start to get wrinkles, you start looking quite old in the face, and you might think there's absolutely nothing you can do about it, but luckily for you, today's video sponsor can help you. If you go over to healthwithjustice.com, you can get this amazing multi-collagen powder with five different types of collagens that can help thicken your skin, maintain the elasticity, and fight off aging. That's healthwithjustice.com, healthwithjustice.com. Suspect in this attack released on bail, paying $7,500 cash. Fox 5's Ashley Rodriguez is live in Harlem with a closer look at how he was allowed back on the street so quickly. Ashley. So one of the things that I've really tried to emphasize and I've really tried to discuss whenever we go over this topic is the fact that bail reform oftentimes is not about bail itself. Here in this case, they actually set a $7,500 cash bond, meaning that the suspect in this case needed to come up with $7,500 in order to be released. However, what my issue is with this story is not that they should have set a higher bond or anything like that. The bond amount is dictated by the law, and I am sympathetic in part to some of the arguments about how setting high bonds could end up disadvantaging managing people in poverty, especially if it's a cash bond, thus making them stay in jail for a long time pending trial. However, one of the problems in this case, and this is something that I've always said bail reform is actually about, is the fact that you're removing judges' abilities to determine whether or not somebody is a serious ongoing threat to society. I think that we have judges and they exist for a reason. One of those reasons is to exert some level of judgment, it's even in the word, on cases like this so that we don't end up in a situation where if somebody can raise $7,500, they can get out of jail immediately. Now, I'm going to continue with the segment, but I just want you to know up front that that is the issue that I always bring up whenever we talk about these so-called bail reform laws. Yeah, so is this guy a threat to the community? Because of bail reform, judges in New York cannot ask that question when determining how long someone should stay behind bars. But when people saw video of the attack and they realized the guy's already back at home, back on the streets they pointed to the justice system and they said look it's flawed and there needs to be a dangerousness clause so i get that the local news lady is reading off of a script but when you see this video and you think about her opening her portion of this segment by asking whether or not this guy is a danger to society you are going to crack up. You are going to laugh. I don't think I've ever seen, and I know I go into hyperbole a lot, 
a video quite like this one that I'm going to show you. So everybody prepare for it. And if you're on my podcasting platforms, I will describe the video to you in great detail so you can understand exactly what's going on. It's the morning of November 29th on Amsterdam Avenue in West Harlem when police say 36 year old Kareem Azizi. So the two key people in question, for those of you who are unaware, are the person in the red hoodie who's going to be our victim for today and the person in the black hoodie and in the mask. Now, to be clear, in New York, it gets cold this time of year, so this stuff is not unusual. On top of that, lots of people wear masks because of the virus, but honestly, that's not really the lead of the story. The lead of the story is what this guy in the black shirt is going to do because it's so insane on so many levels. Harlem, when police say 36 year old Kareem Azizi pulled a baseball bat out from his pants, stepped forward, swung, and slammed the bat into the back of an unsuspecting man's head. Now, if you're listening via Spotify or via Apple's podcasting platform, first of all, thank you for subscribing over there. And let me be clear, you did not miss here anything from this local news segment. What she just said is this man pulled out a full-size baseball bat, a bright red full-size baseball bat, from his sweatpants that I guess he was just carrying around in case he needed to walk up behind somebody and club them in the back of the head. And that is exactly what he did. Now, I can't show you him actually making contact with the back of this person's head because of YouTube's service service. They will age restrict the video. They will do all of these things. So instead, I'm going to tell you guys a bit of a story. And this story takes place on August 22nd, 2006. It was actually my 16th birthday. However, this doesn't take place wherever I was on my 16th birthday. Don't ask me because I was at home watching the baseball game. And you see, that baseball game on that fateful day was the Mets versus the Cardinals. Now, I'm a huge Mets fan. I love the New York Mets. I support the New York Mets. And during the course of that game, John Main delivered this pitch to one Albert Pujols. And he hits it to deep right center field. Forget it. What a shot by Pujols to the opposite field. A three-run homer, his 37th of the year. Now, for those of you who are unaware, John Main is actually the first pitcher in Major League Baseball history to have a last name that is spelled exactly the same way as the state. Obviously, that state being Maine. And for that year for the New York Mets, he was actually quite a decent pitcher, a good pickup by Omar Minaya. However, he came into Shea Stadium that day, and Albert Pujols, one of the greatest right handed hitters of all time, in his prime was standing in the batter's box and he clubbed that home run. That is one of the furthest home runs I've ever seen hit to that part of the field. And the other two people who hit the home run that distance were actually left-handed hitters. Pujols hit that opposite field. He absolutely crushed it. And of course, on my 16th birthday, the New York Mets were down three to nothing. Now, Shea Stadium sat over 50,000 people, and this was a big game. Mets, Cardinals in August. Obviously, two teams going to the playoffs. They'd eventually meet in the LCS. And did you hear that thud? Let me play it again. And boy, and boy, and boy. That's the ball hitting the scoreboard in a stadium with 50,000 people who were just silenced by the monstrous opposite field home run that Albert Pujols just smacked off of John May. But the heartbreak didn't end there because, you see, in the very next inning, after hitting that three-run opposite field moonshot after crushing that ball, Albert Pujols came up with the bases loaded, and John Main was still on the mound, and he thought maybe he could pitch to Pujols this time, and obviously, that was a horrific mistake, because he then clubbed this home run over the bleachers, grand slam. It's a deep left field, back goes Tucker looking up, and it's out of here! A grand slam for Pujols! Seven RBIs in the last two innings! This game shaped up as an MVP showdown. Albert has laid all his cards on the table. Which was a part of his seven RBI showcase, which he achieved in just two innings. Now, by the way, just to give you an idea of how great Albert Pujols is, I mean, a lot of people will point to the fact that he has 703 home runs, 
fourth most on time, an absolute juggernaut throughout the course of his career. But honestly, this is the season in particular that I point to because Albert Pujols hit 49 home runs this season. He had an insanely good batting average. However, the most impressive stat to go along with those 49 home runs, his 338 batting average, his ridiculous amount of RBIs to me is the low number of punch outs he had that season. Albert Pujols in a season where he hit 49 homers only struck out 50 times. The last time a right-handed hitter did that in the history of baseball was 1937, nearly 70 years before, and it was pre-war Joe DiMaggio. Now, DiMaggio had 46 homers, so three fewer, but he also had 13 fewer punch-outs at 37. It's unfathomable to imagine that this guy was basically in a league with pre-war Joe DiMaggio this early in his career, but that's how good Albert Pujols was. Now, the Mets, of course, answered. Delgado hit two homers of his own, won a grand slam, won a solo shot, and it all came down to Jason Isringhausen, former New York Met great prospect, on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals against one Carlos Beltran. And as Gary Cohen had the call, he said, Beltran is up where one swing can win it for New York. And just like that, even though Albert Pujols had a reign of terror over my 16th birthday, the Mets were redeemed with that one swing. They took the win, and 16-year-old Sean was incredibly happy. Now, the point of this story originally was going to be a joke about me saying how dangerous Hispanics are with a bat. Because when you look at the suspect in this incident, he actually looks quite Hispanic. However, his name is Aziz Kareem, which is clearly not a Hispanic sounding name, but I'd already decided that I wanted to tell you a story of a game that I saw on my 16th birthday, so it's included in this video anyway. The 47-year-old man, who police say is homeless, may have just gotten into an argument with Azizi. Sprawled out on the sidewalk, he cowers and flinches as the suspect threatens to strike again. A manhunt follows, and in a week's time on Wednesday, police had their man in custody. Now again, call me crazy, call me a conspiracy theorist, call me somebody who hates the poors, even though the victim in this instance was a 47-year-old homeless man, but if you're somebody who walks around a city with a baseball bat tucked in your pants, just in case you need to club somebody in the back of the head that you got into an argument with, I would determine you to be a clear and obvious ongoing threat to society. I would determine you to be somebody who needs to be held pre-trial because obviously you're a danger, obviously you have anger management problems, obviously you have judgment problems, and obviously I don't want to live in a city where somebody's going to pull a baseball bat out of their pants and go Carlos Beltran on the back of my head. Jay. Police had their man in custody. Maybe stand closer to the plate next time you swing. Look, a lot of people, and a lot of people on my side of the aisle, talk crap about New York City. A lot of them are like, oh, it's just as bad as St. Louis, and all these other untrue things. And I have to admit, it is getting worse. But New Yorkers are some of the most amazing people. This guy gets arrested for clocking a guy in the back of the head. And then somebody shows up to his perp walk to heckle him and say, next time, stand closer to the plate before you swing. Maybe stand closer to the plate next time you swing. Greatest city in the history of mankind and the greatest people on planet Earth. You can't disagree. He even said it in a ridiculously over-the-top New York accent, and he timed it perfectly so it would be captured on the local news for everyone to enjoy. By Wednesday night... He was back in his home, released on $7,500 bail. 7500 cash bail is really low. Uh, he can get that like that. We caught him. We arrested him. We processed him. They release him. It just, it, it's, it's just insanity. Now, all joking aside, this former NYPD detective is 100% right. The police go on a manhunt. It's a week-long manhunt for this guy because this video is so vicious, so disgusting. And he was free running away from the police, evading capture for significantly longer than he was held after he was arrested. Former NYPD detective Michael Alcazar says while most judges consider a variety of factors when determining bail, in New York, bail reform dictates they cannot consider a defendant's dangerousness. This kind of thing is demoralizing if you're a police officer. You put in the work. You do 
the manhunt. You capture the guy. The guy attacked a homeless person, 47 years old, attacked him from behind. Couldn't be more cowardly. It's presented in front of a judge. The judge knows this guy's a danger. The judge wants to hold this guy in lockup. But guess what? New York's bail reform law, which guarantees same-day automatic release, also restricts judges from using dangerousness as a factor in deciding to detain somebody. You're carrying around a, a weapon, like a bat, a knife, a gun. You're, you're a bad guy and you should stay in jail until the judge sees fit to impose whatever time you're gonna get. So even though in this incident, it wasn't a same day automatic release and you could put bail, the fact is not being able to assess dangerousness led to this guy's release. He's back out on the streets and he could reoffend again. Mayor Adams and NYPD Commissioner Sewell have called for a dangerousness clause to be added to bail reform laws giving judges more power to keep violent offenders behind bars and off the streets. Again, Mayor Eric Adams is a Democrat. He's a former Brooklyn Borough president. I don't like him. That position is held by people who are insanely corrupt, and he's pretty left-wing on a lot of issues. But right here, he's dead-on accurate. In 49 states, we managed to have laws that let judges assess dangerousness, but in the state of New York, that is a no-go. It's completely out of the control of the mayor, completely out of the control of the district attorney who by the way is Alvin Bragg who of course will likely undercharge and under prosecute this case anyway but can we have some relief can we hold this guy for at least longer than he evaded capture he pulled a bat out of his pants came up behind somebody swung full force at the back of his head the homeless guy could have likely been in the hospital longer than the manhood and this guy being arrested he was definitely in there longer than this guy was in jail and that is not justice that is not reasonable that is not sensible and this whole idea that we're gonna have bias or racism or whatever but advocates argue prejudice and bias influences who is considered dangerous if we allow judges to have judgment like they do in 49 states in this country is absurd it's insane and of course it's going to be presented to us in one of the stupidest ways humanly possible. Azizi's defense attorney argues Azizi has no criminal history, is a father of three, and a lifelong New Yorker. Factors those calling for a dangerousness clause should keep in mind. Look, I understand people who have no criminal history, no pattern of behavior, and a judge can look at that and make an assessment. But at the same time, people don't have a criminal history before they commit a crime. And the idea that I'm gonna look at a video of this guy clubbing somebody in the back of the head over an argument and then menacing him, threatening to do it again while he's on the ground losing consciousness is ridiculous, it's absurd, it's insane. And again, all I want in this case and in all cases is for judges to be able to use judgment to determine dangerousness. Now, we're going to go to the defense attorney and I will give the caveat that the defense attorney obviously has to defend his client. So obviously, the things that defense attorneys say should be taken with a grain of salt because they're an advocate for their client and they have to say sometimes ridiculous things in order to make their point because again, they're advocating for their client. But what he says in particular has been voiced by activists over and over again, and it really pisses me off. We can't hold people in, in cages in modern day slavery, um, you know, until they wait for trial. It's just, it's just not, it, the system cannot work that way. The defense attorney went on television and said that if you hold a guy who swung a baseball bat hit a black homeless person, by the way, in the back of the head, this person not black, then that is the equivalent of being in favor of modern day slavery. I didn't say we should put Aziz to work. I didn't say anything like that. I just said a judge and the news segment just said a judge and the mayor just said a judge should be able to have judgment in this case. And according to this idiot, according to this district attorney, who again, caveat, is advocating for his client, but advocate better and don't say ridiculous, insane, woke stuff while you're advocating for your client, that would be the equivalent of being in favor of modern day slavery. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. I cannot believe that these people have power. Honestly, we should have voted in the Legend of Zelda, but the Legend of Zelda was far too good for this state, far too good for this city, far too good for the people of New York right now at this moment in history. You get what you vote for, and this is a Kathy Hochul special because the kind of people that Kathy Hochul listens to 
are people who talk like the district attorney, not people who advocate for the victims. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, then show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can follow me on each and every one of my social medias in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about somebody who clubbed another person with a baseball bat and was released because you can't assess dangerousness. Till next time.